Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeads, and today we'll be covering topic 6.11, which is hydrogen fuel cells. Our objectives for the day are to be able to describe how hydrogen fuel cells are used to generate power, also to be able to describe their environmental effects. And then finally, the skill that we'll practice at the end of today's video is explaining an environmental concept or process. So for, first we'll talk about some basics here, which is what is a hydrogen fuel cell and how does it work? So we wanna know here that it's a potentially renewable alternative fuel source uh, that could replace fossil fuels for both electricity and transportation. The benefit here is that hydrogen and oxygen gas are going to be the inputs uh, to generate electricity. And then the only output is going to be water. So it's not going to release greenhouse gases. It's not gonna release air pollutants the way that fossil fuel combustion does. So let's look at actually uh, how this process works. So what's gonna happen here is hydrogen fuel uh, H2 gas is going to enter the fuel cell. And what happens is it hits this hydrogen reaction pole and the electrons are separated from the protons. The protons can pass through this membrane here, but the electrons have to take this alternate path around. We call this a circuit. And so the electrons are going to flow through and a flow of electrons is an electrical current. And so that can power a device. It could power a light bulb. It could power a car. It could power anything you know that requires electricity. Then when those electrons come back to the other side, what we have is the protons flowing through, but then we have oxygen coming in as well. And those oxygen molecules are going to break apart into single oxygen atoms. And then one oxygen atom will combine with two hydrogen protons and they form water. So that is our only output here. Our only emission is going to be water. Uh, so this is just kind of a run through step-by-step -step, uh, that you can add to your notes so that you can remember how this works. And again, uh, its most common application here or its biggest potential is in vehicles. So it could replace gasoline as a fuel source. And remember, that's a great uh, benefit for the environment, for ecosystems, because it won't release greenhouse gases. Other than water vapor, we do need to remember that water vapor is technically a greenhouse gas, um, but it has a short residence time in the atmosphere. It's not going to stay there a long time, um, but it's not going to release any carbon dioxide and it's not going to release any socks or NOx or other air pollutants that can form acid rain or have other human health impacts. Now we'll talk about where we actually get hydrogen gas from, which is the fuel source in hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, so the key here we need to know is that hydrogen uh, to obtain it in its pure form is difficult. It doesn't exist by itself naturally. And so basically what we have to do is separate hydrogen gas from different molecules that already contain it. Uh, and the two most common molecules that we separate that hydrogen gas from would be water, H2O, and methane, CH4. One thing we need to know about this is it's very energy intensive. So it takes a lot of energy to separate out hydrogen. Uh, the main two ways that this is done is steam separation, which requires burning natural gas, really high temperatures, and then a method called electrolysis, where we split water basically uh, using electrical current. Let's take a closer look at the steam reforming process. So in steam reforming, basically what's going to happen is you're going to burn natural gas. So we have CH4, which remembers methane flowing in. Uh, we combine some air because we need air in combustion reactions. And then we add in steam. And what's going to happen is we're going to separate out basically the carbon dioxide, but we're going to also separate out the hydrogen gas. And so one drawback of this uh, from an environmental standpoint is we do release a lot of carbon dioxide when generating hydrogen this way. We do get that hydrogen, which can be valuable and which can be you know, a fuel source where we're not actually releasing CO2 at the point of use of the fuel, but we are releasing CO2 through this steam reforming process. Another method, which is potentially more renewable, is electrolysis. Uh, so in electrolysis, what we're going to do is apply an electrical current to a tank of water, and it's basically going to separate out your hydrogen on one side and your oxygen on the other. So we can actually generate hydrogen gas just by applying an electrical current to you know, a tank of water. So again, this is potentially very renewable, but the problem is it does require electricity. So no carbon dioxide is released directly by this process, but again, we have to ask ourselves this deeper question, where does the electricity for electrolysis come from? And so what you're probably realizing here with the hydrogen cycle is um, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Uh, we have to get this hydrogen gas from somewhere and every process that creates the hydrogen gas takes energy. And so it's all about trade-offs. And we'll talk about why we might make this hydrogen trade-off later on in the video. So as I mentioned earlier, it might seem kind of strange to use natural gas or to use electricity to create hydrogen, to create electricity again later. 
I know that seems like a strange process, but I want to talk about why hydrogen is such a valuable energy carrier. So because hydrogen gas can be pressurized and stored really easily, it can be transported easily as either a liquid or a gas. So what that enables us to do is capture energy in the form of that hydrogen. And so we could actually use electricity to do this. And we could use electricity from a coal fired power plant or from a renewable source. And we can use that to drive this process of creating the hydrogen gas, either through electrolysis or again, through steam formation. But what's really valuable about this is that we can then use that hydrogen gas a long distance away and at a later point in time. So we can't necessarily bottle up the solar energy that we create, the electricity from solar or from wind, and just use it at a later point in time at a greater distance away. And so that's the big utility of hydrogen gas. It's an energy storage uh, system and an energy transport system. So again, we can generate this electricity now, we can store it essentially as hydrogen gas, and then that hydrogen gas is very useful. It could be used as a fuel source later, you know, a great distance away. It could be used to generate electricity and heat homes, again, a great distance away at a later point in time. And it can be even used uh, for other purposes like uh, fertilizer creation and, you know, in the chemical industry. So there's a lot of uses for hydrogen gas. And so if we just run through these really quickly, we can kind of remind ourselves that as, of this as we jot this down in our notes. And so again, we can use it to replace you know, fossil fuel driven uh, vehicles. So we could replace gasoline where we're not emitting greenhouse gases other than water vapor, and we're not emitting air pollutants into the air. And so again, while it might seem confusing to generate electricity, to create hydrogen gas, to generate more electricity, we can see here by looking at this diagram and kind of reviewing how it acts as an energy storage system, how useful it is to store energy in the form of hydrogen gas, and then basically use it to create energy at a later point in time. And then finally, we'll talk about some drawbacks of hydrogen fuel cells. So the biggest one right now is that 95% of all hydrogen gas is produced through this steam reforming, which of course requires natural gas or methane. And so even though hydrogen fuel uh, does not emit air pollutants or greenhouse gases other than water vapor um, at the point of electricity production, it's based on a non-renewable underlying energy source. So we need a non-renewable input to actually create the hydrogen gas. Now, if we use electrolysis, we may be able to get around that. But remember that using electrolysis to create hydrogen gas is only going to be as sustainable as the electricity source. So if we're burning coal to create electricity to separate you know, the hydrogen gas out of water, it's not necessarily a renewable fuel source. It's only as renewable as the electricity source. So we can see in this kind of infographic here, uh, this idea of capturing solar energy and using that to create electricity or wind energy using that to create electricity that could create what we call green hydrogen which is renewable hydrogen because these underlying sources of electricity are green or are renewable if we're going to use apes vocab terms uh, then that would make this source of hydrogen renewable we could continually do this because we're not going to run out of water on earth we're not going to run out of sunlight uh, and we're not going to run out of wind and so again we could have renewable hydrogen, but right now electrolysis only represents about 5% of all hydrogen production and the percentage of that electrolysis that's renewable energy, you know, I don't even know what that is, but it's, you know, far less than, than the total amount. And so just want to highlight one more time that hydrogen gas is only as renewable as the electricity source uh, that creates the hydrogen gas. A couple other drawbacks we should be aware of. And the first one is a distribution system. We currently have uh, a phenomenal distribution system for gasoline. Everyone uses gasoline in their cars. Lots of vehicles use it. And so we have gas stations everywhere. We have huge, you know, miles and miles with you know, thousands of miles of, of gasoline pipelines and, and tanker ships equipped to, to ship gasoline. So we have a really efficient gasoline transport network. We don't currently have something like that existing for hydrogen gas. That doesn't mean it couldn't be built, but that doesn't mean it's a big barrier to its wider adoption. So we would need hydrogen fueling stations. We would need uh, ships and, and tankers. Uh, we would need trucks, tra uh, you know, retrofitted basically to, to transport hydrogen. And so that doesn't cur currently exist. Uh, and then finally, we would need to make the fuel tanks on vehicles larger in order to accommodate the amount of hydrogen needed for extended ranges that would be comparable with gasoline. This isn't like a major hurdle. This is something that car companies are working on, but it's something to be aware of. So for practice FRQ 6.11 today, 
i want you to explain how hydrogen gas can actually be used to generate electricity.